Welcome back to the hottest weekend of the year so far. She was a scorcher. And we are standing in a field in the middle of Somerset. Penned in like cattle, if you will. This is one of those weird ones where they don't let you go in until they buzz the buzzer and then they have to, everyone pushes on the gate and it's it like a stampede. It's like a stampede. I, I, I think originally as well with this one, they kind of like did a joke where they kind of semi-opened it and everyone was like not impressed at all. But uh, yeah, they're opening it up now. I actually think so it's like counterproductive for human safety. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> let's not go. In, let's not go there for health and safety. I get it. Go. I get why they do it, but I don't look. All the people. Anyway, we were eyeing up this stall from the fence, if you will. There was a certain stripe that we could see, and we were hoping that it was going to be the stripe that it is. Does that and make it, sense? Yes, it does. It was a it was a, a capsule uh, guess spell out a long sleeve uh, t shirt, I guess, or or it is a t shirt, not a sweater. Um, they were very, very popular in the early 90s. This is actually like a, um, a, re, a repro of the Capsule collection. So it's supposed to look like the one we just displayed. Um, they, the original vintage go for about 100, maybe 150, depending on the actual uh, colorway. This one will go for about 50, 60 pound. Like I say, it's kind of part of the Capsule kind of vintage collection. I think ASAP Rocky wore it, didn't he? Yeah, and he did a collab with them as well. Oh, okay. um, So keep out for those. But once again, not everything necessarily from Guess um, goes for amazing money. So don't buy everything you see, which is Guess. In the 90s, this is what Guess were known for. Even that label there, that's like how the vintage label it's used like to look. It's like that muted stripe. I don't know, it's like a deck chair stripe. Yeah, very much so. Um, I would say, well, once again, like that that's an original vintage on screen now. So there is a bit of a difference, but by the same token, this was, I think, £5, four or £5 pounds i think it was five yeah um and once again it's, it's a bargain um it would probably sound deep up as opposed to ebay yeah so i always put like i always try and put ebay com comps up on the screen because i know most people use ebay and it's like the preferred method and blah 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 but this probably will sell on depop and it probably will sell for more than the comps uh displayed yeah. on ebay it's just a different market and that is the market for that particular item so always search your different comps when looking for things at car boot sales and in charity shops how much of those? 20. 20, okay. I left the commentary in for that one because I find it really interesting when people charge higher prices um, at car boot sales for... Um, certain well, items. Certain items. We like to pick up Air Force Ones. They sell really quick and you should always pick up Air Force Ones. They do really well. Especially in different colourways and stuff like that. Yeah, but, but like... Please note, we like we try and get them for as cheap as possible. Obviously, twenty pounds into forty, there is still room for profit there. But after fees, etc., you know, it's not fantastic. However, what Austin's looking up, looking at here, is... I was I was kind of loitering, and you couldn't really tell because I was just stood by the guy weirdly. Um, but basically, yeah, this is a vintage G Shock, um, original G Shock. Uh, they they have a lot of these have really really good money. Um, once again, the vintage ones more so. I mean, the, the, the newer G Shocks do as well. But I would say, like for example, that one's I think listed at one hundred and ten, just over. And I think I paid maybe a couple pound for this max. There are some that go for like the upper hundreds into the thousands though. Because oh yeah, there's loads. I think because the watch market is like doing like big yeah, things. I I agree. It passes on kind of to the more like well kind of regular. We sort of swap our like um. Uh, ethos at a car boot sale and instead of checking the belts and the ties which we still do anyway <laughs> yeah. at, at boot sales it moves over to, to check the sunglasses and watches the other, the other one to mention as well maybe we'll do a video at some point on this kind of stuff but swatch um swatch one swatch brand watches um swatch. Any, anything older some of the newer stuff as well but like anything uh, like older specifically vintage we picked up quite a few recently haven't we anything like early 2000s limited edition collabs um when they're like a pound or two, honestly, like you pick them up, do some research. At worst, you're, you're even a, sw a basic swatch, which is worth in their eye, in kind of the collector's eyes, nothing, 15, 20 pound easily. But only swatches have started being going crazy, though, since their collaboration with um, Omega. Omega. Yeah. Um, so it just, you know, it's the way the watch market's moving at the moment. Also, you don't fashion. Have to be invested in Rolexes. No, you can not start at all. like ground level in um, Casio, and which sounds stupid, but it's, it's no, true. No, that's, right? that, that's exactly how people flip. It's like clothes. You start off with something kind of a few pound, 
and then you know, you sell that, then buy a couple of other yeah. items, and bit by bit by bit, you got a real kind of high end kind of. Um, the thing is, because shop. because we're luxury specialists, and you're not always going to find that kind of stuff at car boot sales. You have to diversify a bit because we love doing car boot sales. Like it's a joy finding things. Yeah, um, I agree with that. I agree. This guy had loads of used jeans, old jeans, Wranglers, Levi's, etc. Few all, vintage bits. Yeah, all good money. Um, we we don't tend to um. I just don't like this in jeans, let's be honest. He has some really cool vintage workwear. If you can find the, like, jaw jackets from the uh, from France. These were French Birkenstocks, ones. which were totally done for. As soon as I picked them up, I realised. The, the footwear was too too much. Um, this was a, a Stone Island, but we're not a Stone Island, if you know what I mean. Um, a phone island. A phone island. But, yeah, they... Um, it, oh, I mean, to be honest with you, like... Never be, never keep yourself to one set of rules on picking. I mean, we once again, like we're the luxury pickers, but by name, and that's what we choose to kind of, um, we, we our careers are in. By the same token, if we see something that will make money, we will, we will, we will buy it. By the same token, I don't necessarily just pick up. A, I uh, think uh, car boot sales is an opportunity to have a little bit of fun though, in it, and try new things. That's a really good way of putting. It, actually, yeah, I agree with you. Cheaper, I don't know. Uh, no, that, that's that's a really good point. I think some people, and we done it ourselves before. You you become a bit more like stayed yeah. in what in what you actually pick up and when we did that for a while like and just purely picked up luxury and left everything else it was less fun do you, do you always, not agree i do come, <laughs> talking of fun i always get fomo when a stall's really busy i have to i like i have to go look at it yeah I, I, I think it's because it's, it's the kind of crowd mentality isn't it if people are crowded around it must be good yeah um there are a couple of kind of uh repro vintage shirts on this one um, I think one was from like H&M or someone, one was from maybe Urban, I don't know, I, I can't remember exactly They're if reprinting a lot of vintage um, prints onto new uh, uh, new blanks and a lot of the sort of like fast fashion companies like Misguided, Pretty Little Thing are making like uh, vintage style t-shirts, that's a Misguided one for example, so always like be conscious of that when you're looking at vintage so I that mean, was a proper vintage t-shirt but it was like an australian kind of um like tourist piece tourist piece which yeah. some tourist pieces can do really well but they have to have like a good like subject matter i would or... also say only pick up single stitch yeah you know? whereas for example that one wasn't and that's one of the reasons i left it otherwise for a pound i would have taken it you know check your glasses this is the boot sale where we found cartier reading glasses yep we've also found uh dior, dior sunglasses yeah. we found um what else ray bands a couple of times kids ray bands yeah we found we found those really nice uh 90s ray bands here that went for a couple hundred. Oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i left uh there was incredible hand standing because i thought she'd like that like that was that was exceptional <laughs> Yep, she is a special. <laughs> this well, pizza was particularly busy. A lot of buyers, a lot of buyers, and not a huge amount of stalls. Um, if you were selling this pizza, it was probably really good because people yeah. were like desperate to buy. Yeah. Um, I I know a lot of other resellers go to this one. I don't know how they found it in uh, particular, but it. I do don't you, know. Do you also think sometimes, like I, I see obviously other resellers on um on Instagram and YouTube. Do you also like feel it necessary sometimes to um like pick something up, or would you just rather not get anything? Um, I I rather just walk away. Same. To be honest with you. Same. And I feel like people get that kind of mentality where I pick this quickly up. I don't know if I shot on camera. That one's Karl Lagerfeld. Karl Lagerfeld is um has his own namesake brand. He actually um did he die this year? He did, last he, year? He, yeah, he died, he, I don't know exactly when. This recently, is a, yeah. I include a picture of and Karl Lagerfeld. Him. He's very famously the creative director and head of Chanel before he passed. And um, the only other creative director apart from Coco Chanel herself. Um, and he's a very respected high end fashion designer. However, he has his name his own namesake label. The vintage stuff does really well. Um, and some of the sort of more yeah, tweedy pieces that have a chanel vibe this is new style or like new label if you will which always has like sort of like little icon of his head or yeah, his, his silhouette of his cat or whatever do, do you know we, we found out recently while doing research for something else um the Balmain, the, the company which is known for the blaze and um uh, very biker leather biker pants and stuff like that and biker jeans um which which once again have been very popular the last few years he was one of the first ever creative um that was where he was his first creative director role if you will or fashion role was um the the mr balman if you want um picked him for that kind of job that role which is very um, interesting, I thought. Yeah, it is interesting. His own namesake brand is a bit more ready to wear, just in case anyone wants to know. Um, it's really cool. Um, 
Uh, it's John, kind of fun, isn't it? More, yeah. more, more, geared, more younger, I would guess, as well than yeah. Chanel. Yeah. A uh, retail is about 150 for a jumper, around about there. They do about 60 to 70, depending on sort of like... Um, style. Style, theme, look. Yeah. Um, definitely worth picking up, Um, but the, you definitely want to be looking out for the vintage stuff if you can. There were some Air Maxes there. The bubbles were gone. Um, the bubbles were gone. But were you thinking profit over project, Austin, or were you thinking no? I was thinking they were small. I was thinking that the the actual upper was beat as well. Yeah, but a okay. good point. If you don't get that, if you don't get that reference, go and listen to our podcast, which once again wasn't on YouTube this week. It was a podcast only exclusive. Get it wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs> iTunes, I prefer. Um, no, we were talking about projects over. Uh, pro- projects over profits over there and this was a brad paisley shirt which you know i fully appreciate country for life um it was 2014 if you can get the vintage ones they go really well yeah they do um and they're really cool if we're all going to be honest with ourselves austin was eyeing up these a6 that this lady put down um they had i like picking up men's a6 um i especially like the gel but you can see from that that the back back of the heels had gone yeah now because a6 are specifically running shoes they're not having really a problem like a a hype around them or anything like that um i would suggest n- not projecting them yeah projecting uh, yeah them. i agree there was also a pair of uh, mary janes i think on yeah. the on the, on the Dr. table Dr. there that they wanted 40 pounds um which is great if you want to wear them these are some vans now these are really cool we like to pick up premium vans like the corduroy or any limited edition Excuse however that. we had to play into um the whole you know i'm going back to it again the whole projects over profits kind of thing you did some work in those shoes you because know? if you get that in ground dirt out of corduroy, it's just slightly harder than a leather upper or a nylon upper. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I was actually just going to say, I wouldn't put the amount of work that that needs into that shoe to make it look... I wouldn't buy it unless I was going to do that. Yeah. Because the amount of money I would get after buying them for a few pounds... It sounds funny, but it's just it's, it's wasting time. Fans are a lower profit shoe as well. They're very much like Converse. Unless you yes. hit a certain one 1, or a certain collaboration, yeah, yeah. you're not really going to find a huge amount of money in it. There's always going to be a ceiling on Vans. Like, they're great bread and butter, but by the same token, do I want to clean bread and butter items? That's what yeah, I would think. Yeah, they were lovely. I, I agree with you. This was an Amazon pallet clearance. Um, it was e. madness, G. wasn't it? They bought pallets and they were clearing them. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was interesting. Um, I saw this from afar, but as soon as I picked it up, I was like, "Ah, D squared knockoff hat." Um, and but they all had some interesting things. They had some Dior testers, you know, the little oh, samples like fragrance tests. Yeah, and samples. I know uh, Sam sells. I think she's Sam sells on Instagram. She sells the samples, and she does really well on them, especially the vintage ones. Um, they they wanted a pound each, which doesn't sound like a lot. Um, but, but they had they had bags and bags and bags of them, and it yeah. was like if you were to buy, you know, it'd be a, a large know. investment. If yeah, that makes sense for something with a a very small margin. It's a quantity over quantity there exactly there there were some cool dead stock wranglers here um i actually i was hoping that they would be a uh, vintage kind of dead stock which would have been really good as in why well, they'd be called dead stock but they weren't they were just kind of general uh, wrangler jeans and if i'm honest um from what i could hear with him speaking to other people about the prices weren't cheap no well they you know? needed to make their return on the amazon pallet probably isn't it 100 percent. this guy on this still actually had a ghetto monopoly if anyone's ever sold a ghetto monopoly on ebay i'd love to know um because we had a brief conversation about it whether you i think you can sell them if you're quick about it but if they sit on there they get taken down i'm not sure though so this t-shirt was interesting it's a prada it's 100 percent authentic it's got the zip on the shoulder there but the actual label that label was good but the actual inner label that's the inner label, but the one that would be the collar, yeah, where I'm yeah. kind of putting my fingers there, had been removed. So I'm get, it's a very tacky kind of top. It's like, um, I don't know if you can get, you can ke- see it on camera really, but it's almost like a mesh. Yeah. 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 Um, so I'm guessing someone took it or got ripped out. But this is from um, the Prada um, Linear, Linear Rosso, Rosso um, uh, kind of vibe. When we say that, it's just like red, it means I think it translates to red line, and that's yeah. why it's the red line. It's like their tech wear. It's their tech wear. It's also involved with like anything sporty, from F1 to like literally, they did, they did snow, they did um, snow, uh, jet skis and snow skis yeah. and stuff uh, last year. 
So yeah, um, it's once again something to keep also, a look out for. There was some wear to this wash label, as you probably saw, and I just wanted to mention in this video. Yeah, pretty much gone that blank. Sometimes, sometimes people buy them, and I, I, I don't do it, but some people do. Some people put them in the wash, <laughs> yeah. and they're not designed to actually go in a commercial, no. uh, not commercial, in a uh, what's a, domestic a, a, a washing domestic machine. Wash machine. Yeah, they're right. meant to be dry cleaned, and that's this can cause damage to the wash tag. So do keep that in mind. Um, these were some Michael, Michael Kors. Kors Boots. They were really nice boots. They weren't what I call Michael Kors. Michael Kors. They were kind of the higher end Michael Kors. Uh, but they wanted, I think, twenty pounds for these. Which yeah. once again, um, nice boot, but I don't know. Size free. Small size, but also re 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 retail resale. We're probably looking around about I don't know anything from like. 50 to maybe 60 out of them. It's one of those brands that, um, once again, all the diffusion lines sort of confused it. the market. Yeah, I agree. Not killed it, but confused the market, like the bags, oh, you know. That's like, that's maybe that's a discussion for another time, because once again, that's that, well, they, maybe they maybe they did kill it, or maybe it made it better for the brand because there's more brand awareness. Yeah, like, I would, I would like, like to say... A lot of people didn't know Michael Kors before they had the cheaper version of the bags out. I would like to say also, we pay £4. We haven't actually told anyone what we're paying for things. We pay £4 for the Carl Lagerfeld, we pay £4 for the Prada. What would you we expect pay... from the Prada? Uh, about 150 cause and that's it is without a the label more basic tech shirt yep does it make sense yeah it totally does yeah um, it, but it did have like it did have the outside rubber brand in these shorts which Bethany picked up are Pilcrow and the letterpress this is a US list uh, I will talk about that in a minute they, I also found some cos trousers this is a completed vestiaire they went for 50 on vestiaire which I find amazing so I wanted to put that in anyone who's interested about maybe using vestiaire going forward as well if you just check uh, you just search an item it will come up sold or not yeah. I, I, obviously it's not every item they've ever sold you might have but to more change recent. your filter to you, sold um, no, if you, just, if you just search in general it'll come up at the very bottom I sometimes have to change my filter to sold I, I literally did last night do you okay. know I have a full domestic on well, here it might be because you use a different device to me oh that's what it could be mine could be set up a different way yes. I apologise profusely I and you're right very quickly about the pilcro and the letterpress shorts they are from Anthropology. Um, they had some really nice embroidery on the side you can see the exact picture of them in that picture um i did include an american comp um because there were no british comps the exact shorts however yeah. because they're in my opinion because there is a sole comp whether it be in america or the uk it means there is a demand for said uh, item and yeah. i have gsp on and i have worldwide shipping on so that just says to me that i can sell them to america or i can sell them to japan or i can sell them to any place in the world and if there is a demand for that pair of shorts then i'm gonna take it and run with it uh, the sold price was about 20 odd and the shipping was 30 odd therefore let's slap mine down for a little bit of 40 pounds if anyone wants to buy them from the u.s and uh haggle with me on price because of their shipping and tax then i do not mine but it shows there is a want and a uh, desire for that brand in the world and i deal with the worldwide shipping i am not just a uk based seller does Check. that make sense? 100%. 100%. A heck of a mouthful, but 100%, I agree, yeah. Let's, let's, like, let's expand ourselves. Like, let's just sell to whoever wants something. Yeah. Does that long, make sense? Yeah, as long as... I I, I, I mean, once again, I, I've never dealt with anyone who was, you know, too kind of... Uh, there were no issues with sending abroad, so I, I, I just don't understand. GSP is, is useful, I would guess, and that's why they do it. Um, I mean, you literally got to get it to... Um, Litchfield, is it? No, that, that's not... Litchfield, Litchfield is. Litchfield, yeah. Is it's it literal, yeah, because it's the same place as Orange is New Back. Yeah, that's what I was, what I was prison, coming to. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So don't send it to Brism. <laughs> also, that's fictional because you couldn't, but you take my point. When we used to point. drive to Oxford, we used to drive past it and it used to get me every time. Exactly that. Well, anyway, um, that seemed kind of interesting. How about you? This was a short and sweet boot sale where we just proceeded to talk nonsense we, over we, we, the footage. We, we bought a few bits. You know, it's a bonus, a little bonus video for you. You can have it. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. If you do want to watch it, watch it 27 times, like it, and comment down below of how much you enjoyed it. If the flip side, if you got to this point in the video, you clearly have watched it, so thank you either way. Um, and this week, what else do we have coming up this week, Bethany? What do we have this week? We have another episode of the podcast coming out this week. Oh, obviously, every Wednesday. This um, one will be on YouTube also. Yeah, and we've got some big trips planned this month. We are basically back to back, back to back, back to back, back to back. Back this, to back, back. This month. So we had a kind of like easy July because you are going to see our faces a lot. It's coming month. at you. That's all I'll say. Yeah. And maybe it won't be just on YouTube that you see our faces. 
Wow. Oh. What an insight there, Bethany. Oh. Bye.